night. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eastern Current. Yeah, excited about our guest tonight. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff that really interests me and, and an area that's real inspiring and, and interesting to me as well. Um, before we get going, I want to talk to you all about today's sponsor of this episode. I'm going to pull their slide up. Um, but this is uh, J&J Boat Services, uh, detailing and diving specialist if you need your boat detailed in the in the greater Wilmington area. They're awesome. They've been doing my boats and, and just spotless work. Uh, a really, really great company and just as professional as professional can be as far as, you know, uh, the boat industry, you know, with the way the economy is right now. I feel like people are kind of getting a little slack on, on, on some departments, but man, they're just so professional. They're they're earning your business and they're just great people to work with. So um, give them a call. If you use the code EC2022, you'll get 10% off on your first service. So um, definitely do that when you give them a call or email, but I will have all their information linked in the podcast show notes and the YouTube description so you can find it there. Uh, but excited about this podcast, like I was saying, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring on our special guest here. It is Captain Jay Withers. What's going on, man? How you doing, buddy? Oh, doing good, yeah. doing good. We were just talking before we got on here. I was like, man, this is this is going to be a great podcast. We need to shut up and press record because we're, <laughs> we're letting too much good stuff slide here. That's all right, man. Uh, well, we can talk about it. I can talk about it for days. I mean, it is what it is. For right? sure, for sure, man. Well, well why don't we get started um, you know, I, well, I'll, I'll kind of share how I found you. Well, first off, through on Waypoint TV, seeing your TV show, seeing your stuff on, right on. Instagram, um, and just really fun dude to follow. I really liked I was like, you have a, path, a Pathfinder and a Maverick. I have a Pathfinder and a Maverick. I feel like, I mean, what, I mean, I guess a lot of people might have <laughs> yeah. Pathfinders and Mavericks, but but it was, I was like, man, I think we're like, you know, soul brothers in different areas fishing, yeah. so um excited to have you on here and uh and, and kind of pick your brain a little bit but why don't you tell people your story you were sharing it with me before we got on here but um just kind of how you how you got into guiding and and how it's brought you to where you are right now yeah well first i appreciate the opportunity man i, I always dig doing these and and back when i first started it was you know podcast just by words and not this video right, stuff which right, i did right, right. right um but anyway so yeah my story is uh maybe not not the typical you know like all of a sudden we're decided we're going to be a fishing guide and you already have a boat and you're ready to go uh mine started um from in ohio i i lived in ohio i was a diamond dealer and jewelry designer um that's all i did that's that's what my wife knew and we'd been married for a number of years at that point and um you know fast forward a little bit i i basically came down to florida on a fishing vacation uh, leading up to that, uh, I was on trips in the diamond business. You know, they never send jewelers to cold places. So we always went to like San Diego or Savannah, Georgia or Orlando, of course, or Miami. Well, I hired fishing guides yeah. in those trips. And, and honestly, that's what kind of got the bug. But I hired a guy out of Anime Islands, uh, back in, I guess, 1998. And, uh, and we just, we went fishing, we went red fishing and caught a pile of them. And guy had a little eighteen foot flats boat, flip flop shorts, t shirt. I gave him five hundred dollars at the end of the day and I jumped back on the plane the next day to snow sleet and suit and tie and French cuffs and Heck yeah. I'm like, I don't know. This this doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> so so really that's kinda what started in my mind and um you know, a couple years later I, I flew back down uh on a fishing vacation. For sure. Um and that was really just to uh, kind of get my mind, you know, to kind of really dial in a program. It's like, is this really where, what I want to do and where I want to live? Right. So I moved, I came down to Port Charlotte. It's right on Charlotte Harbor. I literally found Charlotte Harbor on the Atlas back when we used to use the Atlas, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we just Google it. But, um, but anyway, I found Charlotte Harbor on the Atlas, and it was, you know, there's no – no giant buildings on the on the property or you know on the land and and of course having said you know like aquatic preserve it was part of so i was like Man, this could be pretty cool so i came down um and i hung out at tackle shops just listened you know tackle shop talk you can hear a lot of stuff yeah some good some bad right that's very <laughs> but, true uh hung out at some tackle shops and went and looked uh, for some properties uh with my, you know because i was trying to put my uh, like ducks in a row to convince my wife it'd be a good idea to move to Florida. So um, flew back to Ohio and um, took my wife to a Monday football game and uh, just, you know, like beer and nachos and say, hey, uh, 
what, what do you think about moving to Florida so I can be a fishing guide? And, and she was like, she didn't understand because at first, you know, I, being in the diamond business, that's all she knew. Right, and, right. And, you know, she was like, well, you know, maybe go and start another shop down there. I'm like, nah, thinking about being a fishing guide. And she's like, you know, if you think it'll work, let's do it. Now, don't get me wrong. There was some, like, I had to, you know, put some other things into the kitty. Like, uh, you can build the house you want. Uh, that was part of the deal. Yeah. I'm still ro- I'm still working on rope in the moon. <laughs> but, but you know, there was, she, I think she saw it. Uh, in me where you know the diamond business was good i mean we were married earlier in our 20s and and you know for uh, many years you know just she and i the diamond business was good to us yeah but it did have its 1500 square foot office seven days a week in many cases um and i just didn't see myself doing that for 30 years right, right. so that's really what it come down to and um when she gave me the green light, she believed in that I'd be able to pull it off. And uh, in three months, we sold everything we owned. I moved to Florida in Port Charlotte, rented a house in um, in 2001, January of 2001. Uh, she was committed to her job until March. And I literally fished every day. Yeah. I, I, had, I had some family. It was about maybe an hour north of me. Um, and I used to come down as a kid, you know, like, 15 years old yeah. and fished the Skyway Bridge. Uh, but that was like, that's the only real fishing I did in Florida. Wow. Uh, and I'd never fished Charlotte Harbor a day in my life prior to moving. <laughs> that's to cool. Be a fishing guide that's there. super cool. So, so, you know, I, I think that, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, you hear people talk about whether you jump off with one foot or two, and uh, that was full leap, buddy. <laughs> yeah, man, that's just leap. cool. And that's what a great wife to just be like, sure, if you think it, that that's something oh. we can do and just to, to, to trust you and to be that support yeah. there, man, that's that's super, super awesome. Oh, no doubt. And, you know, honestly, you hear about it all the time. It's like, you know, a lot of times success is, is, you know, brought on by not just hard work, but, you know, your support system. And For sure. She's 100% been behind me in this. And, and I tell people all the time, you know, it's like, Look, I may I may have some charisma and some personality, but she's got all the brains, and she's the one that has you know like, hey, you can make this happen, <laughs> and uh, and really that's that's what it is. And I tell people, you get a chance to meet her, you'll understand why. Yeah, you know? definitely, it's, definitely. It is. Man, that's cool. That's super cool. So coming down here, starting to fish every day. What was the learning curve like? Like coming into a new fisher and Ooh. actually being able to fish every single day. Did, and I'm sure people are like, where the heck did this guy come from? Because like I I've got a I've got a good finger on like boats like when i see a new boat around and, and there's a lot of boats oh, yeah. around but you kind of are like okay i haven't seen that boat but then when i if i started to just see like a, a different flat skiff like every single day where i was i'd be like what the heck where where did this person come from <laughs> so how did that whole how did that whole thing kind of unfold for you well to be honest with you it was an ugly start for me because i brought <laughs> my old bass boat with me heck behind yeah. my u-haul and yes i quickly realized the bass boat wasn't going to cut it in Charlotte harbor it just that just wasn't the program. Yeah. But I promise you, I probably did some wrong things in that boat. People realize they're like, who's that joker, right? You right. know, I was that guy. <laughs> but um, Everyone has been that guy. Yeah. Oh, 100%, right? So I sold that bass boat and bought a 1989 permit flats boat. Nice. They were made They were made in like Cape Coral, Fort Myers area. And... Um, and it was, I mean, it was 1989. It was an old one. Yeah. I hold the Yamaha 150 on it, Pro-V. And um, that's honestly what I learned in Charlotte Harbor. And no GPS. I ran I ran the boat for basically two years, no GPS. Yeah. Didn't know where I was going. <laughs> but You found but, your uh, way. I did, You're here I, now. I did so many wrong things in that boat. But, you know, and back then, too, you can appreciate this. You know, people used to scout with their trolling motor yeah <laughs> or the push pole right? right right so that doesn't happen you're telling me you can anymore. find fish with a push pole funny enough right <laughs> funny enough so so anyway i um i spent a lot of time on the water uh whether i had clients or not you know and I, it took me a little while to get some time uh you know enough time on the water go i had to go through class and get my license um but you know i started guiding and, um, you know, I did odd end jobs. I worked for my stepfather um, just to try to make ends meet as I was building this. 
And, uh, and yeah, I mean, when you start out with a old Beats 1989 flats boats, but knowing that you're going to use that as learning curve, right. uh, it was, it was the best humbling start you could have, I feel, because I didn't know anybody, you know, I, my stepfather lived an hour north of me, but I wasn't driving up there all the time. I, this is home right, right here. Right. So, uh, that's where, you know, the jumping in with both feet, I think, um, that's the best advice I give to a lot of new guys is, and say, well, maybe I'll just do it on the weekends, or maybe I'll just do it for a little extra money here. I'm like, look, if, if that's what you want to do for a living, it's like all in. Yeah, 100%. Because it makes you run it like a business, too. That's the other thing. There's a lot of a lot of fishing guides, you've probably seen it where you live, that sometimes they're here for two or three years, and they're gone. Right. Hey, I've been doing it almost 20 years. I've seen a lot of those come and go. Mm-hmm. But uh, the reality is uh, you put your time in, and um, and more people think that the guide business, as you know, is is all about catching fish. But the reality is, it's it's a people business. It's a relationship business. Definitely. Um, so I think that's a that was a big part of my you know learning being in the diving business. I was already in a relationship type business there, and I just kind of took a little bit of that. Yeah. And took and took what I knew. In the bass fishing business, yeah, because <laughs> I bass fished all my life. Yeah, that's all I ever did, right? It's what you do in Ohio, right? And I brought those bass techniques. Much of it's the similar gear, yeah. You know, spin rods, light spin rods, uh, spin reel, three thousand series spin reels, and, and brought that game to the inshore, and um, and, and ended up catching some nice redfish and snook and. So it's all about building confidence at that point. Definitely. Did you find yourself quickly gravitating to a certain style of fishing here or where you were? Like you were like, wow, this is, I can definitely see this being a big part of, of, of my, you know, my, my day to day. What was, what, what fit, was it a certain fish or a certain style of fish or anything like that? Yeah, it was. Uh, and funny you ask that question because I, I feel like where, what really turned it on for me was, uh, redfish and tarpon yeah. and, and uh, the quick funny story about the redfish is I can catch them on top water. I can catch large amount of bass on top water. Yeah. So that started and catching some snook too. But um, something about being able to sight fish redfish was super dialed in for me. Like I I really appreciated that type of fishery. Yeah. Um, and then not knowing any different, I hooked and lost my first tarpon under the bridge and on the peace river Heck yeah not fishing for tarpon <laughs> as most people catch their first one not fishing for them but this giant fish jumps up behind my boats attached to my rod and i'm like that's the beautiful most beautiful thing i've ever seen in the water <laughs> right so so honestly i just started like kind of honing in some skills on on redfish and tarpon and then it just so happens that you know the tournament scene yeah uh was redfish and tarpon so i really kind of focused on those two species yeah. um i figure if i can try to develop a little niche in this business uh for targeting either one of those species uh, i feel like it's enough draw that it would help build a business and it has for sure it has, for, for sure. sure growing your business you, i feel like you started at such a great time too is like the, it, it it was it was a time that you, I mean, I, I don't know how you, it'd be so hard to get into guiding now. Like I've only been, I've been guiding eight years full time and it was, I feel like even less competitive then, but now there's just so many people and everyone now is, oh. you know, you and I, I feel like are pretty, pretty savvy, tech savvy and, and in with the, you know, you've got your TV show and, and really good on social media, but now like every single person in any type of business platform is like dialed in on that stuff and, and even fishing yeah. guides. And so it's, I feel like trying to break through now is even harder to do, um, but I don't know. I don't even know if that was a yeah, question no, or a statement. <laughs> I, I, but I, I would agree with you, but I will say that some of the younger new generation guides um, are pretty savvy with social media. Yeah. Like I I still fully grasp all what it can do, right? right, I, mean, right, I, right. I try to you know like definitely do my part, but – you know, I'm dancing at 50 years old. I, I'm kind of the old curve, right? Right. right. <laughs> so, so when I, I mean, when I started guys, there was no Facebook, there was no Instagram, there was Yellow Page ads, 
and you had to do seminars and yell at the top of your lungs to get a couple people to come fish with you, yeah, right? Yeah, golly. So, what is yellow so page ads? I'm just kidding. No doubt. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I, I told you, that goes back to the reference of, of the Atlas as right, well. Just right, <laughs> right. So, so anyway, but I think now with these guys, um, they're really dialed in to um, how they can use and utilize those social media platforms to build business. Um at least they're going that route instead of just waiting for the phone to ring. You know, they're some of them are pretty, pretty savvy on getting that business. And I do think that sometimes it gets a little, you know, Instagram versus reality. Definitely. Cause, cause I'm guilty of it as well. You're not going to see a whole lot of posts of it's an awful day, but those days happen. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and I don't know that, you know, I, I, there's, I've, had shows i've filmed shows that have been awful but i'm like maybe we should actually like have this as a show right i mean this stuff happens but people don't want to see that they want to see like you're jacking fish and tarpon flying in the air but um i don't know i think now you're right i think that it's probably tougher now it is uh heavily saturated for sure number of fishing guides um but I think there's a lot of businesses that way. Yeah, I mean it's it's any business really. It's it's so competitive yeah. now, and um, but especially yeah. I, I feel like I mean I don't blame anyone that wants to get into guiding. It's definitely something that yeah. that has gotten popular, and um, you know I think social media is the rise of the fishing and hunting industry in a big way, and um, yeah, that, I mean that's a whole podcast topic in itself. But <laughs> I get talking about media and content and whatnot. I'd love to hear kind of how. Where, where the TV show kind of came into it um, and how that started for you. Yeah, so uh, I feel like it's been a whirlwind. I mean, we, we just, we're filming right now for season four, uh, and it looks like uh, episode one is going to come out the first part of April, nice. season four. So, um, but you know, honestly, as a kid, I mean, I feel like if you have the passion of fishing and, and you watch these guys, I, I was watching Bill Dance and and Roland Martin's of the world, and, and right. Jimmy Houston's, I, I was like, man, that, what kind of dream job is that, right? <laughs> uh, so I feel like it, I've always had that in me. I feel like now, as I've you know, kind of grown in the fishing industry, um, that it's more than just having a show. It's, it's more for me, anyway. It's, one, it's time for I get to fish. Right. And you know, as a, as a fishing guy, we don't always get to fish. For we sure. live vicariously by somebody else's rod tip, right? <laughs> right. Um, but the reality is um, having the show gives me an opportunity to visit new places, uh, new fisheries, uh, sometimes catch fish I've never caught before. Uh, I still have a running list of fish that I haven't caught before, both freshwater and saltwater. Um, and I, I feel like it's, it's a way for me to share really what, what gets me up in the morning for sure and and as cliche as it sounds like oh it's like oh it's a big ham show the reality is i want people to like after they see an episode i want people to be like man that place was pretty cool yeah we need to either fish with that guy that was you know the co-host of the show or or maybe i i film it myself and and we talk about different techniques they want to be able to pick up some different techniques that's a little bit of sharing about what I can do, and I just now do it on just a broader scale. Yeah, level. yeah, definitely. That that's awesome, man. I think that's cool. I think the teaching aspect it's a guide is something that you got to be passionate about. Um, it, you know, to be a not to say you can't be a good guide, and not be a good teacher, but I feel like that's a big part of it because you know I can I can go out there and catch no fish, but I can still teach an angler a lot about what we're doing, why yeah. we're there, why the fish aren't cooperating, why they are cooperating, you know, and and maybe why the cast wasn't in the right place or you know, I'm always trying yeah. to, to take each moment to, to teach. Cause that's something I know I can give someone. I can't always give someone a fish. That's someone on a podcast. I can't remember who it was, but I've used this a lot lately, but they said, you know, guiding is the only job in the world where, whether it's hunting or fishing, where like you can do everything right, prepare, you know, spend hours the night before getting your boat ready and your gear ready and go out there, but you're still like hoping that this wild animal cooperates the way you want them to. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. it's, I, and, and people ask me to that point, I've had people ask me, well, why won't they eat? I'm like, look, if I, if I could tell you why they're not eating in this very moment, one, my rates would probably be different. <laughs> you know, if I could, I haven't figured out how to force feed them. 
and I haven't figured out how to control the weather. Beyond that, we're going to have a great time on the boat. For sure, um, for sure. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think you're right. I think a big part of, you know, being a guide is, is yeah, the fishing is definitely part of the game. I mean, I think a lot of people, and I only say this because I was that guy, meaning I was the one hiring the fishing guides when I was in the dime business. I hired a pile of fishing guides from San Diego to Savannah to Miami to Orlando right. to Tampa. Um, and, I mean, I saw the good, bad, and the ugly. I, mm-hmm. <laughs> some, of, some of them definitely were in the game for the right reasons. <laughs> some of them were not. Right, right. But, right. Um, but I think that, you know, to fall back on what you were saying, I think that uh, many times, you know, if you get – if you if – you, Get on a boat, and the guy that you have, the fishing guy that you have, that you booked for the day, um, has the right attitude from the very beginning. It, the fishing's secondary. For sure. You know, it, the worst thing on the planet is to get on a boat with a guy for six or eight hours, and the guy, one, doesn't talk, which would drive me crazy, because um, I like to talk in case you haven't figured me that too. out. Me too. I do too. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I mean, if he's just got a bad attitude, it's, it's no good. I mean. For sure. I, I mentioned I'm almost 20 years into this game. I know some guys that are kind of salty and a little crusty at 20 years. Um, I hope I don't get to that point. Uh, but I feel like, you know, uh, I'm fortunate enough to have really good repeat clients year yeah. after year. And, uh, I mean, that takes work. That doesn't happen overnight. I mean, for sure. First three or four years I was here, I, you know, there wasn't all. Wasn't a whole lot of fans of Jay Withers here, uh, <laughs> you know, in this little tiny hometown. Yeah. Um, so it everything comes with a little due time and some respect and and uh, humility in a lot of ways, and and that's really what what started that whole you know business. They were like, all right, so he's here to stay. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah. He's doing the right things, he's running it like a business, and for sure. And that's really where it's kind of been catapulted from there since. Definitely. I mean. I think that's cool, and and you got to think everyone gets their start, and then all of a sudden they've been around for a little while, and everyone's like, oh, you know, they're they're pretty cool. It's like everyone wants to point fingers at the new guy and be like, oh man, he, that guy didn't deserve to be guiding here, or fishing here. But it is yeah. kind of like a you watch all those old or those like Alaska TV shows, like the King Crab shows and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like the Green Horn, and they got to earn their stripes, and they, everyone picks yeah. on him at first, and everyone's like, you know, that guy's not too bad, and then he's he kind of earns the respect of everyone else. It's funny how. How that is, but at the same time, I just talked about this a little bit on a, on a podcast like a week ago. There's a lot of guy drama. There, there's always guy drama, and, and it's and my wife, she's a hairstylist, and and she has her own salon now. But when she worked at a at another salon, you know, I've always I've always heard you know hairstylists, the most dramatic people, always you know gossip, all kinds of bull crap, and yeah. she was like. I have never heard more dramatic people than the fishing guides that you talk about. It's like he's he was fishing in my area. I fished in his buddy. Show me that spot. Like all this, just constant drama. Especially when we first, when I was younger and we first met, it was just like. And now, now I've really, you know, have, I've I've chosen to to kind of not let it bug, bug or bug me as much and, and not get in the middle of that stuff. But it's funny the the guy drama. It's like a bunch of middle school girls sometimes. At least where I am here in North Carolina, so. Oh, it doesn't change in South Florida. <laughs> I figure South Florida is probably the same, if not worse. Yeah, I, you know, here I, I don't know how many registered uh, guys there are in this, and just in this county, even Charlotte and Lee County. But um, you know, we definitely have our fair share of our drama, and and I and I honestly, over those years, you know, I, I out of the tournament scene, yeah. and just kind of nose to the grindstone, doing my own thing. Um, I try not to get wrapped up in that. Um, most generally, it has zero effect on me. Right. So I I don't know why I put that much headspace uh, for that. But, for sure. Um, I do get sucked into it sometimes. I, I'll admit to it. But <laughs> most of the time, that's from um, new guys uh, in in the in the guy community that um, are kind of like learning the ropes. And I've been for there. Sure. I, I did lots of wrong things i'm sure right uh and and i'm sure some of these new guys do the same um now with social media they can get called out on it a lot easier yeah. um probably a good thing there wasn't facebook or instagram when i started guiding but <laughs> um but you know i think that people just need to be respectful for people others that are on the water whether they're 
you know, just doing it on the weekend to, to, you know, make a little extra money. Um, I get it. I, I, I totally get it. And I, that's where many times people get wrapped up in what other people are doing. Right. And it shouldn't affect you at all. No, I mean, no, it shouldn't. I, and we're all guilty of it. It is what it is. But I, I feel like if you just stay in your lane and just keep doing, you know, Most definitely. keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. I mean, as long as the customer's happy, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't that's matter. The truth. As long as you're that's doing the, the right things um, and not abusing the system and abusing the resources, I think it's fine. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree. I agree. It's it's something that that. It's just really a waste of time. We should all be, you know, teammates in the business together. Yeah. And that's one thing that I've really realized here. With I, I've really worked hard to grow a community of buddies that, you know, you can't have a massive network of, of sharing intel. But, I mean, the importance of having a network of, you know, shared intel with, among a few guides or a few fishing buddies is, is, is huge. I mean, I used to try to keep, you know, think it was really important to, like, keep every little thing that I'm learning kind of to myself. So I've. Not in a selfish way, but just in a protect, you know, what I know way and what I've yeah. learned. And then I started to realize, like, you know, as I bring a few few other guides or buddies in that we're constantly sharing, my fishing became way more productive. Their fishing became more productive. And it, it worked, you know, working together as a team was just awesome. Is that, is that something that you, that you find yourself doing down there as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, I have a core group of guys that, um, that one, I trust. Right. Um, you know, and some some of these guys I've mentored in in their guide business. You know, growing up as uh, being the old guy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of mentored them along. But you know, I, I've had you know tarpon mates over the years, um, and they're now full time fishing guys. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, you know, keep a core group of guys that you share information back and forth with. Um, and you know, now you know, being in the game a while, I, I got a lot of a lot of business that I end up referring to yeah. other guys that, that I work with. And, um, you know, and, and it goes the same way. I mean, for sure. Some of these guys, you know, if they're booked, they'll, they'll reach out to me. If I, if I'm not booked, I'm, I'm in it. Right. Definitely. But, um, but you're right. I think you can, you can't maintain a network too big right. because then the, the set of information just kind of gets dwindled down to, for sure. uh, maybe it's not useful at the end, but, uh, that's a good yeah, way to point that core, put that core group group of guys i typically have five or six guys that i work with um and i and i tell people that call that maybe if i'm already booked you know I, as an example i booked tarpon season a year in advance yeah well if you google search book grand tarpon i'm pretty confident i'm number one yeah but the problem with that is and i it's a good and bad they still call and they want to book next week right right well, uh, you gotta be looking at 2023, bro. Right, exactly, <laughs> but, exactly. But so I tell them though, because I always want somebody to be able to experience that opportunity, whether for it be sure. with me. I want I want them to be with me for sure. But if I'm already booked, I got somebody for you, and I've already vetted them. That's the cool thing about having that network of guys Definitely. is because now, the guy looking on the internet, he don't know who he's calling. Right, he's just hoping. With what he sees on his website, on the guy's website, is you know enough or inspiring enough that he's going to book the trip with For him, sure. um, or it gets him on the phone and he's you know, and it's a good conversation and they end up booking. But in many cases, you know, I just tell people, I'm like, look, I've got five or six guys I've already vetted. They have the, the quality boats, the gear, the right attitude, and are very fishy guys. Yeah. you know, that's all you can really ask for. Definitely, as, as a guide searching for somebody else. Um, and, and it's very well received by people that are calling because they realize, like, look, man, this guy, you know, he's already booked for next week, or uh, and now he's booking for next year, but he's got somebody within his wheelhouse that that he trusts can get the job done. Yeah, and that's a question so that goes a long way. That's a question I'll get a lot of times too. Referring trips is like, you know, I I am booked, but I do have some guys that I that I book trips for or recommend. Would you want to fish with them and? And people are always like, I mean, I will if, if you say that it's a good person, you know, if it's if you trust them. Yeah. And, and I mean, I don't care how big social media, YouTube, Instagram, any of that stuff ever gets. Nothing is going to be like word of mouth. If someone someone oh, that you 100%. directly are talking to or know vouches for someone or a business, no matter what it is, that's going to go much further than just Googling. I mean, that's what I'm doing yeah. right now with these. We were talking before we went live about 
me getting these estimates on, on some stuff I got to do at this new house. And I could go on Google, but pretty much everyone I've called for anything has been, I'll post something on Instagram and be like, Hey, I need, need a concrete guy or I need this. And someone's like, Oh, this is your guy. This is your guy. And, and just, yeah. I feel more confident already just knowing, you know, that, that someone has, has had work exactly, exactly. Yeah. And knowing someone has yeah, fished totally with good. someone and, and they're like, you know, Hey, we might, we caught a few fish, but man, he was an awesome guy. He definitely knew what he was doing or, you know, we caught a ton of fish, but yeah, it's that word of yeah, mouth no, is, I'm, is crucial. I'm right there with you. And I, I feel like, you know, when, when I was that guy, you know, shopping for a fishing guide and select cities that I yeah. was going to, um, you know, I know what I was looking for as a fishing guy or as somebody mm-hmm. tried to book for a fishing trip. Um, and, you know, yeah, I, I wanted to fish. Sometimes I got some pretty rough situations, yeah. um, but which wasn't always on the website. But, uh you know, boat problems, had to borrow a boat, whatever, right? I, I've heard it all. <laughs> but, you know, I think that you, you look at some longevity of people, you look at the, the circle of people that they hang with, uh, sometimes the brands that they represent, or that, they, that they're associated with, that comes a long way too. Because right. some of those top-tier brands, they just don't, you know, circle up with anybody. Right. I mean, it's... Right. There's, I think that's a big part of it too, and I and I really believe that, despite how many fish you can catch, really it comes down to, the business model, personality, and just being a regular guy. For sure. Um, that yeah, still has a passion of doing it. Right? For and sure. That's that's really because nobody wants to get on a boat with somebody that's all sour and didn't want to be there and or is drunk from the night before. <laughs> right. uh, <laughs> we, I'm sure you've heard those stories too. But um, no, I, I still enjoy what I do. Um, I, it's getting old. It's getting tougher the older I get. You know, the older I get. But um, I do love fishing out of that Maverick. And I love just pulling along, nice and quiet. Two anglers. Then artificial, or even better, just uh, one angler. Fly. <laughs> oh, one angler would be a magic. Yeah, thing, right. <laughs> but you know, the fly guy, uh, or just one one angler throwing spin, man. I mean, it's just the conversations you can have, and and just kind of like get into the into the day, you know, into the, sure. what's happening. And I, I think that's one of the coolest things. And honestly, one of my favorite days to fish. I actually had a couple of this past year. We get a crazy amount of fog, which huh. I'm sure you do as well. Yeah, we do. Uh, we, we get a crazy amount of fog, and the days that it's super foggy, you can hear everything. Yeah. And if you just, like, just stop for a second and just listen to what's going on around you, it's pretty magic. Yeah. I put I, put, I had the opportunity to fish the guy that uh, was, you know, owner of Maverick Boat Group. It's a uh-huh. deal. And um, I hadn't fished, I'd worked with him for years. I rarely had the opportunity to fish him. I uh, fished with him in December, and we had one of those days that it was just super foggy. I got great shots on Instagram. I got a permit on fly. I mean, it, it was one of those days. That's like, cool. Man, this is, this, is, this is what brings you back to the reason why you started. Right, right, right. You know? It's those moments, man, in fishing and in anything. But, like, I had one of those the other day, and it was just such a pretty day. First, first, like warm spring day where I wasn't putting my jacket on every time I was, <laughs> yeah. I was taking it off when I got to a spot, putting it back on. When I was running, but I was able to keep it off while I was running. And we pulled up into this little bay, and like came off plane, cut the motor off, or like drifting in there. You could hear the birds, and you're just just that moment of like, God. And we, 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 I wasn't even very confident about the spot we were about to fish. The tide was a little wonky. I was like, yeah. this is kind of a, I, I hate to admit it, but like a little bit of a time burning spot. We actually ended up catching fish in there. But I was waiting for the tide for, for a spot a little bit further south. And just hearing the birds, the the warmth, the, the you know, just being out there on those days, man. It, it's it's weird how it'll hit you sometimes. It's not always how you expect yeah. it, but how it'll hit you. And you're just, you know, you realize you're blessed to be out there. And just it, any any day you get to spend on the waters, whether you're guiding yeah. or just fishing for fun, it's just such a blessing. So, Yeah, I, I think still for me today, you know, it, it's – that early morning ride, yeah, you know, and we're, you know, this time of year we use a lot of live bait still. And, yeah, me too. And it's it's all over the flats, and but that early morning ride out there where it's just breaking sun and um, that's still pretty magical. And, For sure. And I still enjoy that part of it. I still enjoy having people on the boat. Uh, don't get me wrong. I on my twenty five pathfinder, I'm not super excited about having four people slinging hooks. 
that's not that's not my idea because I go from the Maverick at one or two people the day before to four people on the Pathfinder slinging live bait. It's different, right? For sure. But I fortunately the people that are coming out with me, many of them are repeat clients, and I like them. Yeah. <laughs> so that helps. Definitely. <laughs> but um, but you know it's it's for every day it's still different and and you know going you know to the for the show it's and what we talked about earlier it's just changing venues for yeah, me it's yeah. going to, in places fishing well, i've not fished before and um some of these places i'm gonna be visiting that when i was in the diamond business and hired those guys some of those were guys that are already retired yeah but um uh, going back to those same fisheries and fishing that so that's and, uh, cool uh, that that's gonna happen. It'll be full circle type. Thing. Yeah, definitely. The, the trip yeah. of inspiration. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's awesome. That's, right. that's super cool. Looking forward to that kind of stuff. You know. Definitely, man. I don't I don't have a TV show or anything, but I do enjoy capturing stuff on on video that I put on YouTube, and and I do like. I rarely film like as far as I, I like on a day to day basis guiding. I'm fishing inshore, light tackle, sight fishing, that kind of thing, but I very rarely am ever like filming around around home like i love to travel even just north and south in north carolina you know doing di- hitting different types of fisheries and, and just experiencing yeah. that and capturing that it's it's a lot of fun so um well i know every i feel like every fishery nowadays needs a voice for something is, is there is there a place or is there is there anything going on in your area in charlotte harbor or you know the greater area around you that conservation wise you feel like really needs to be touched on or anything like that Oh yeah, a lot of things. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I mean that's a that's a huge can of worms. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean honestly, it's, I moved here to be a fishing guide, and and much of that decision was brought on by the area. Yeah, you know the the small little town, which I still really like. You know, I I still love the area that I live in. Um, the Charlotte Harbor was a special place, and still is a special place. Um, the challenges we're running into is, is as I hear and see traveling for the show, grass loss, uh, algae blooms, whether it be red tides or, you know, these different algae that are basically smothering the turtle grass. Um, it's a problem and there's lots of finger pointing, uh, lots of reasonings why I feel like that's happening. Um, there's some unanswered questions of why it's happening and, and I, there's clearly people smarter than me that uh, at least are trying to work on a program for that. Um, we have a very old town uh, that's been around for many, many years, and it's directly connected to Charlotte Harbor. Sadly enough, most of those homes are still in septic. Wow. Um, so that there are, is, I just went to a Charlotte County Water Quality Summit uh, this past, early part of March, and uh, there is traction for new uh sewer systems be put in to eliminate the, uh, the septic side of it um but i think that's just the tip of the iceberg yeah um so yeah i mean grass loss is a problem you know you start losing grass you start losing forage right uh, you start losing forage you start losing the predator fish that go after that and it's a trickle down effect and um i've been to a couple places here in florida that um used to have 18 inch turtle grass and it looked like beach sand underneath us. Um, I was, I was shocked. I was, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And in fact, the guy I fished with was borderline in tears. Yeah. So, so that's, that is my fear of what, you know, what can happen if, if things don't get straightened around and, uh, and like, there's a lot of different wheels being pulled, uh, to try to rectify that situation. But, um, I also think too. I mean, we're just getting crazy amounts of rain in Southwest Florida and, and South Florida, and you know, with tropical storms and hurricanes and just rainy patterns through the summer, uh, the amount of influx of fresh water. Yeah. Uh, ugh, I mean, you can you can just look at Charlotte Harbor and and look at the Mayaka River and the Peace River and where those flow together, the amount of fresh water influx that comes through those. Uh, you can look at those areas that are directly affected by that and how much grass loss is there. I think that's a, that's a big factor, too, of which, last I checked, we can't change Mother Nature. All right. All I right. don't know. I, I don't know how that's going to work, but I can tell you that generations that are just starting right now in the guide business, they need to get involved uh, to you know prolong the situation. So you know, maybe 20, 30 years down the road from here, 
uh, which I will be retired, <laughs> then, then that guy will still have a fishery with success and with his client base that comes down. Um, you know, and besides the, the ecosystem and the estuary, you know, we need to take care of our fish. For sure. You know, you guys, you guys, you guys deal with a lot of issues um, that I see all the time going on with uh, nets and mm-hmm. and just fish handling and I mean there's all kinds of stuff that comes into play but I think that when people realize how important that fishery is they'll start paying attention a little bit more and that's one of the things I try to talk about is just handling the fish yeah um, definitely you know you know the, try not to and I, I'm guilty of, like with tarpon fishing we talked a little bit about tarpon fishing mm-hmm. you know when when I'm tarpon fishing years ago you grab that joker however you can and whether you grab him on his bottom lip or you grab him you know on one hand on the bottom lip and with the other hand just the inside of the gill it's bad news yeah because inevitably he's gonna not be happy about the situation your hand's gonna go someplace where probably shouldn't be um so now we just it's we just say thumbs in i mean it's you lock in with your thumbs together your elbows out and you just try to keep them out of your face yeah, that's awesome <laughs> but but that's really you know there's so that's a podcast on itself to be honest. yeah for I sure mean, just just the management of the fishery and how you can you know one let those fish go so they can produce more yeah you know i don't know what you guys have to deal with you know red tides but we're having to deal with it way too often yeah and 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 for us in 2018 we had a red tide event that was pretty devastating. Yeah. Like literally bulldozers and dump trucks taking fish off the beach. And, mm. you know, and then I have people come down to visit me and they want to, they want to keep some fish for dinner. And I'm like, not going to happen. Yeah. Not, not inshore, totally catch and release. You want to catch something for dinner? Let's go mangrove snapper fishing. Let's go, you know, catch some kingfish. Let's catch some triple tail, uh, cobia. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course, if you catch a cobia, I'm probably going to get some of them. Just, <laughs> just a little. Just a little I just need a bite for dinner. <laughs> That's it. <clears throat> That's it. But I think that um, there's re- some really good organizations that are, are working hard on, on trying to rectify some situations where uh, to betterment for the, for the future. Yeah. You know, I, I work closely with CCA and have for many years. Um, and they've, they've been really good to me. I've been involved with some oyster bed restoration projects right here in our nice. home waters. Um, and, you know, I mean, people think, oh, it's just an oyster bite. But those oysters, man, they filter a ton of water. Filter a ton of water. I don't think people realize just how much good those oysters can be. I, and I think in your area, you got piles of oysters. we got a lot of oysters. Yeah. A lot of oysters. <laughs> That's right. It's, uh, so, you just ask my maverick how many oysters we have. <laughs> New York City roadmap. I'm yeah, exactly, joke, exactly. Right? I, I'm sure. But, but, <laughs> but but yeah, sure. We, well, I can't wait to bring my Maverick to come see you. Yeah, we'll come scratch it up a little bit. We'll come scratch yeah, it up. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. For sure, for sure. Well, man, thank you so much, you guys. I'm going to have, before we end this, is there anything else that you want to touch on? And I, I would love to have you on on another podcast and continue our conversation. Uh, but is there anything else you want to touch on on this, that anything we've, that you've thought of that, that we haven't been able to bring up? No, nah, man, I feel I feel we cover a bunch, but I, I'm sure there's another podcast in the future that we can dive deeper into some of those subjects. But uh, I, all I can say is I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, I sure. always enjoy doing these. I feel like, you know, sometimes we can share a story of from maybe somebody you follow that don't even know who they are, you just see their photos. Right. I feel like it's a really good way to kind of, like, get into their life a little Definitely. bit. Um, that's what, and that's one of the things I appreciate podcasts and I appreciate what you do. Uh, the fact that you're also a guide, I think we can relate on a lot of different subjects. Sure. Uh, it does, it does help that you run a Maverick and a Pathfinder, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, but you know, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like we covered a lot of ground here. Um, you know, I, I hope, uh, if they haven't seen the show, your fans, uh, definitely, uh, check out waypoint tv and, yeah for sure uh, it's on it's on youtube as well but guidelines tv is the name of the show and um we're actually in a contest i don't know if you saw the contest i did see waypoint. that yeah, yeah yeah so waypoint is doing the the basically it's a, a series showdown and it's going on now yeah like i just i just made it through round one 
Uh, it's on Waypoint Fish on uh, Instagram. Okay. And uh, I think the next round is, uh, I think it's early next week. Okay. So I'll be posting up on that. And, yeah, definitely. Uh, we, we need to some, rally some troops here so we, so we can get some votes to go through that next round. Heck yeah. Shoot me a reminder next week, too, and I'll, I'll throw it up on, on the Instagram for Eastern Current yeah. as well as my, my own. But I'll have, you guys, yeah. I'll have on the podcast platform and on on YouTube, I will have uh, all the all of Jay's stuff, all of his website, uh, his Instagram, his show, all that stuff, so y'all can go follow him on there. But if you haven't seen any of his stuff, definitely go check it out because it it's awesome. And, and just, you know, just a really, really cool perspective on, on his fisheries and the fisheries he gets to travel and go fish. So, uh, man, like I said, we, we'll have to fish together sometime, whether me down there with you in Florida or you coming up here and have to yeah. get you on another podcast. But I do appreciate you hopping on here and sharing your time with us. And uh, we just want to say thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, appreciate having me on. Look forward to doing it again. For sure. Well, guys, thank you all so much for checking out this episode of Eastern Current. Uh, We will see you all next week. Later. All right. See you, bud.